The Indian Army operates in some of the most extreme environments on Earth, including the highest battlefield at Siachen Glacier, and the high-altitude region of Ladakh. Siachen, known for its record temperatures dropping to minus 60 degrees Celsius, presents a unique set of challenges due to its thin air and severe cold. Similarly, Ladakh, with temperatures plummeting to minus 45 degrees Celsius, poses significant operational difficulties for main battle tanks. Tanks such as the T-72, T-90, Arjun, Leopard, and even the M1 Abrams, renowned for its powerful gas turbine engine, struggle in these conditions. Reduced oxygen levels at high altitudes decrease engine performance and efficiency, preventing the engines from producing maximum power, thus hindering effective maneuvering. Additionally, the cold weather can cause fuel to gel and lubricants to thicken, leading to mechanical problems and difficulties in starting and operating the tanks. The weight and size of these heavy machines further complicate their navigation, over steep inclines, rocky paths, and narrow passes, making their deployment in such harsh terrains a formidable challenge. On the other hand, light tanks are generally better suited for high altitude and rugged terrain, like that of the Ladakh region, compared to heavier main battle tanks. Faced with the choice of acquiring tanks from Russia or developing their own, Indian officials chose to pursue an indigenous solution, this decision aimed to avoid the need for extensive modifications that a, a foreign tank would require to meet local standards. Impressively, a working prototype was developed within two years. Before discussing the features of the new tank, it's important to note that the recently unveiled DRDO prototype is not the final version. Its primary purpose is to test and validate core functionality, design, and performance. One of the first things to notice is the Cockerill 105mm high-pressure rifled gun mounted in the Cockerill 3105 turret. Known for its excellent firepower, this gun can fire high-explosive, armor-piercing, and high-explosive anti-tank heat rounds. High-pressure guns, with their increased chamber pressures offer superior precision and lethality compared to low-pressure guns. They achieve higher muzzle velocities, resulting in a more consistent trajectory that is less affected by external factors like wind and atmospheric conditions, thus improving overall accuracy. However, this increased performance comes with higher recoil. The Zorwar Light Tank's turret has an impressive 42-degree gun elevation angle, similar to artillery, and can be lowered to minus 10 degrees, which is great for the high mountains of Ladakh. Besides being able to fire gun tube-launched anti-tank guided missiles from the turret, which can help mitigate the impact of reduced accuracy and range of conventional ammunition, due to the lower air density, the tank also has an extra ATGM launcher on its side. This launcher might also be a drone launcher, which could provide real-time battlefield intelligence to improve situational awareness and targeting. Or it could even be for loitering munitions. Additionally, the tank includes a 12-round autoloader, which is decent for a light tank. The tank is equipped with an American Cummins engine, specifically the 750, 1000 horsepower variant. This engine is a key factor in the tank's formidable power-to-weight ratio. The Zorawar's high power-to-weight ratio allows it to achieve greater mobility and speed, which is crucial for maneuvering on steep and uneven terrain. Another notable feature is the use of rubber tracks instead of metal ones. Rubber tracks are generally lighter than metal tracks, which helps reduce the tank's overall weight. This enhances the tank's speed and maneuverability, making it more agile in diverse terrains. Additionally, rubber tracks produce less noise compared to metal tracks, and offer a smoother ride by absorbing shocks and vibrations better. This reduction in vibrations also lessens wear and tear on the vehicle's components, potentially extending the tank's service life. Moreover, rubber tracks cause less damage to road surfaces and infrastructure. However, there are trade-offs. Rubber tracks may wear out faster than metal tracks, especially on rough and abrasive surfaces, necessitating more frequent replacements. While suitable for light tanks, rubber tracks may not be ideal for heavier vehicles due to their load-bearing limitations. 
Another reason for using rubber tracks could be that the tank is in the prototype stage. Rubber tracks can be useful for initial testing phases, as they reduce noise and minimize wear on testing grounds. During development, the tank may be tested on various surfaces, including asphalt and urban environments, where rubber tracks cause less damage. Additionally, rubber tracks may be more cost-effective for initial prototype models, allowing for easier and less expensive maintenance during the testing phase. Simplified maintenance and repairs during this phase can help streamline the development process. The side armor design of the Zorowar light tank features spaced armor, which consists of two or more layers with a gap in between. This design disrupts and absorbs the energy of incoming projectiles, making it effective against high-explosive anti-tank rounds, explosively formed penetrators, and small explosive munitions dropped by drones. The initial layer can trigger the explosive, while the main armor remains intact. However, I'm not sure about its effectiveness against armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding sabot rounds. APFSDS rounds are designed to penetrate armor using a dense penetrator, typically made of tungsten or depleted uranium that travels at very high velocities. Their kinetic energy and design enable them to punch through multiple layers of armor, including space designs. To counter APFSDS rounds, tanks typically rely on additional passive and reactive armor, advanced composite armor, and active protection systems. As this is a prototype, these features will likely be added later, the Zorowar light tank has 60-degree frontal arc protection, which guards against small arms fire, artillery shell splinters, and some armor-piercing rounds. Its passive protection consists of layered materials, including ceramics and advanced composites, providing substantial defense against both kinetic and chemical energy threats. Other protections include a missile warning system that detects incoming missiles and activates countermeasures and a laser warning system that alerts the crew to laser-guided threats and deploys smoke dispensers to obscure the tank's position. Work is also underway on AI and stealth features to reduce audio, visual, thermal, and electromagnetic signatures by at least 25%, making the tank less detectable to enemy sensors. The Zorwar light tank is equipped with a coaxial gun designed to engage infantry, soft-skinned vehicles, and other lightly armored targets, allowing the main gun to be reserved for heavier threats. This coaxial gun can provide suppressive fire, keeping enemy forces pinned down while the main gun targets more critical threats. Overall, the tank appears to be quite formidable for mountain warfare, and even though there is plenty of room for more add-ons which can enhance the tank's performance and survivability,